In 2014, there was no wrestler quite like Candice LeRae. Her match in particular against the Young Bucks was a star-making performance for her and is one of my favourite matches of all time easily. Candice LeRae made huge waves on the independent scene and as every other independent wrestler got snapped up by NXT and the Performance Center, it was only a matter of time that Candice was going to join them and get signed herself and sure enough that would happen. On the May 3rd 2017 episode of NXT, Candice LeRae would make her televised in-ring debut for WWE when she was in a battle royal, which of course she lost but it was big as it was her first involvement with the WWE and sure enough soon after this, she was announced as one of the participants for the 2017 May Young Classic Tournament. Candice would go on to defeat Renee Michelle in the first round and then Nicole Savoy in the second round of the May Young Classic, but she was eliminated in the quarterfinals by eventual finalist Shayna Baszler. On January 16, 2018, WWE announced that LeRae had signed the contract officially with the company. And she would immediately get inserted into the feud between Johnny Gargano, her real life partner, and Andrade Cien Almas. This led to her first match in NXT between herself and Zelina Vega, who was of course Andrade's manager, and Candice LeRae picked up the victory in her NXT debut on the April 18th, 2018 episode. And she would get a little more actively involved in the women's division, facing off the likes of Bianca Belair, Kyrie Sane, and Nikki Cross, but she was still mainly just a side character in whatever Johnny Gargano was doing. And with this meant most of Candice's matches were just against other characters in Johnny Gargano's feud, such as when she faced off with Nikki Cross, Cross, who was of course a witness during the whole Gargano Alistair Black attack storyline. This match between Cross and LeRae took place on the 21st of November 2018 episode of NXT, which Nikki Cross picked up the win in and caused Candice LeRae to take a hiatus of TV following the loss. She would return two months later as an entrant in the 2019 Women's Royal Rumble match, her first main roster and pay-per-view appearance for the WWE. She came out at number 17, lasted 9 minutes and was eliminated by Ruby Riot, scoring 0 eliminations herself. Better luck next time. Upon her return to NXT, Candice LeRae seemed as though she was getting away from Gargano on TV and was now actively more involved with the women's division, and she'd aligned herself with Io Shirai, who at the time was feuding with Shayna Baszler. On the June 26th episode of NXT, Candice LeRae accompanied Io Shirai to challenge Shayna Baszler for the NXT Women's Championship. However, Shayna Baszler came out on top and Io Shirai was defeated. And after the match, Shirai turned on Candice LeRae, kicking off a feud between the two. And this felt like Candice LeRae's first meaningful feud in WWE. The two would have a match on NXT TakeOver Toronto 2019, with Io Shirai coming out on top by technical submission in an awesome match. And yeah, Candice LeRae was now a lot more involved within NXT's women's division. She had a title match against Shayna Baszler on TV, however, she was unsuccessful. She competed at NXT TakeOver War Games in the War Games match, where she was on Rhea Ripley's team and they came out on top. She competed at the Survivor Series in the NXT women's team, where they came out on top. And hey, one once again, she was involved in the Women's Royal Rumble match, entering the 2020 match at number 9 and being eliminated by Bianca Belair. And it was 2020 and the next year that would end up being a really big year for Candice LeRae's career, as on the April 8th episode of NXT, she would turn heel for the first time in WWE when she helped Gargano defeat Champa. With this, she debuted an entirely new look and entrance theme and would enter into a feud with Mia Yim, where she defeated Mia Yim in a street fight at NXT Great America. American Bash. Then at NXT TakeOver 31, she would challenge Io Shirai to win the NXT Women's Championship, however she would fail to win this match. She would get a rematch against Io Shirai for the title once again at NXT Halloween Havoc in a tables, ladders and chairs match, however once again she failed to win the match. But this match was absolutely awesome. And during that match between Candice and Io, there was interference by 
Indy Hartwell and Shotzi Blackheart. Indy Hartwell, whom Candice would start aligning herself with, and Shotzi, who she would start a feud with, with that feud culminating at that year's War Games match with Team Candice defeating Team Shotzi. The War Games Queen, Candice LeRae. And this alliance she had going with Indy Hartwell would eventually be joined by Gargano, of course, and Austin Theory, and the four of them would start referring to themselves as The Way. And The Way is probably without a doubt the peak of Candice LeRae's time in WWE. Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell as The Way would compete in the Women's 2021 Dusty Rhodes Tag Team Classic Tournament, where they reached the semi-finals and even had the first ever women's match on 205 Live when they defeated Cora Jade and Gigi Dolan. I mean, hey, if we're being real, Candice LeRae should have been on 205 Live already competing for the Cruiserweight Championship. Wow, the things you can't have, huh? On the May 4th episode of NXT, herself and Indy Hartwell defeated Ember Moon and Shotzi Blackheart to win the NXT Women's Tag Team Championships. Candice LeRae's first title win in the WWE. Their reign with the Women's Tag Team titles unfortunately ended up being a little underwhelming though, as they never made one successful defense of the titles, and just over two months later, they lost them to Io Shirai and Zoe Stark at the Great American Bash 2021. It was a very sudden loss for the way to lose the titles like this, but but not too long after the loss of the titles, it was announced that Candice LeRae and Johnny Gargano were expecting their first child, so I guess it makes sense why they lost the titles. LeRae of course remained on a contract with the WWE whilst on maternity leave, but on May 6, 2022, her contract expired as she had decided not to renew it. And then for a while, there was a lot of speculation on where Candice was going to go. Was she going to return to WWE? Was she going to get snapped up by AEW? Was she going to retire from wrestling? Was she ever going to return somewhere and sure enough she would of course return to the WWE when Triple H would go into power. She returned on the 26th of September 2022 Monday Night Raw as a babyface defeating Nikki A.S.H. She would get into a little TV feud with Damage Control which actually saw her get a couple of TV wins over Dakota Kai and Bayley. However, after that, she kind of ended up doing a whole lot of nothing. Her TV appearances would start becoming occasional with them usually being losses and with the return of Vince McMahon, they started becoming far and few between. If Candice LeRae was picking up a win, she would be doing it on main event, and if she was on TV, the occasional time she was, she would be in a match losing. Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell are now both on Monday Night Raw, and yet they've only had one match together as a team on Raw. Recently, we've seen Candice LeRae attack Rhea Ripley as part of her storyline with Raquel Gonzalez. It seems as though Candice and Indy are getting involved with that. It's good that Candice is getting some TV time from a major storyline like this, but I I can't just help but thinking it's going to end with Rhea Ripley just squashing Candice on a TV match and then Candice just goes back to doing nothing. My only hope is that Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell can involve themselves with the women's tag team titles more. Who knows what the state of those titles is now that Sonya Deville is injured, what they're doing with them. Maybe Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell could take the titles, who knows but I'm not too hopeful of that either. Regardless, I think WWE needs to fix up what they're doing with Candice LeRae because to me, she is one of the best workers in the world and I'm not even capping. Anyway, that's been it for me. Make sure to like, subscribe, leave a comment, all that stuff. Bye!